I've always wanted to try vegan eggs, so I'm gonna make some lunch. I'm gonna add some of this to a blender, along with a handful of some frozen spinach, and blend this up. I'm just pouring this on a pan and swirling it around to make a little spinach crepe. I tossed a can of chickpeas in some oil and salt and pepper. I'm just gonna put these on a pan and roast them for about 20 minutes in a 400 degree oven. It's been about 20 minutes. I'm just gonna add them back to the bowl and I just toss them in a little bit of barbecue sauce. All right, now we just take a wrap, add some greens, some tomato, avocado, and the barbecue chickpeas, and that's it. All right, you guys, here's one of my favorite appetizers. I like to call these bar chips. We're gonna be using two potatoes. I'm leaving the skin on, and if you do as well, just make sure you clean it very well. Okay, so I usually slice my own, but my mom bought me this like two years ago, so we're gonna finally use it. Just gonna slice up our potatoes. That saved so much time. But I still like cutting them by hand. Fill your bowl up with cold water. You're gonna let your potatoes sit for 20 minutes. Drain out the water. Now we're gonna pat them dry. I'm gonna season mine with salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder. This is also the perfect potato chip. Get your cooking creature, lay in your potato chips, 220 minutes. Give a little shake, 400 for five minutes. I like to do mine in batches. If it doesn't reach the desired crunchiness for me, I put it back in for another five minutes on 400 until it gets to the crispiness I want it. Go ahead and plate your potato chips. You can use ranch, but I like to use blue cheese, hot sauce, and some blue cheese crumbles. If you don't like blue cheese, I guarantee this recipe is not for you. My white sauce recipe is one cup mayo, one cup plain Greek yogurt, two tablespoons white vinegar, two tablespoons water, two teaspoons lemon juice, one tablespoon sugar, salt, pepper, and some parsley. Mix that up. And put your white sauce in the fridge. Hey. These mozzarella sticks are a must make. They're absolutely insane. You're gonna need one block of whole milk mozzarella cheese. I also use string cheese. You're gonna cut up the block into any shape you want. I did triangles. I trimmed off the end and then I cut it into about one half inch pieces. I peeled out the string cheese and didn't cut it up. I then lined the pan with parchment paper, put flour in a bowl, Italian style breadcrumbs in another bowl, and whisked two eggs in a separate bowl. I dipped the mozzarella cheese in flour, egg, breadcrumbs, back into the egg, then into the breadcrumbs again. I did this with all the cheese and then I put it in the freezer. You need to freeze it for at least two hours so the cheese doesn't explode in the oil. I then fried it up and they look absolutely insane. It takes about two to three minutes and they're incredible. These are a must make. Let's make jackfruit tacos. This is a jackfruit. Turns out the flesh inside is just like pulled pork, but it's super sticky. This has got to be one of the prettiest fruits. We just pull this fruit out and then remove the seed. And this piece here tastes exactly like juicy fruit gum. Bit of olive oil, tablespoon of garlic, and half an onion. We'll add a bunch of our shredded jackfruit, chili powder, we'll smoked paprika, squeeze of lime, salt, chicken stock. Now, of course, we're making our own tortillas. One cup corn flour and about three quarters cup warm water. A little avocado, a bit of our jackfruit, a few bits of purple cabbage, and a couple cilantro leaves. Mm. That is unbelievably good. This is how I make a keto burrito. I start off by scrambling some eggs. This is for two burritos. And then I top it off with some shredded Mexican cheese. Then I heat up some ham off the bone. Put it on a little bit of avocado oil. Now I heat up a low carb lavash bread. Once I heat it up on both sides, I add a little mayo. You can also use sour cream or any spread and then start topping it off with our ham. Now our cheesy eggs. I also added avocado and salsa. Now let's roll it up. Make sure you tuck in the end, cut it up and you have an easy fight. You know how influencers say, a lot of you have been asking about my blank, but it's only like one person. Well, one of you has asked about this blueberry cake. So here it is. Cause also look how spooky it looks. Um, it's frozen blueberries that you microwave for a minute. And then since this is designed to serve only two to three people, I'm measuring everything else out in tablespoons. Now we blend all the wet ingredients together and then mix in the dry by hand. Because if you blend all purpose flour, it just turns into a mess. So don't do that, but mix it till it's all nice and thick and then bake it for 25 minutes and that's it. Now, when do you want to see my skincare routine? Because- All right, check it out. This this is a beautiful autumn frost pumpkin. Start by cutting it in half, scoop out the inside, add garlic, sage, and beautiful butter. Drizzle with oil and some salt and pepper. Hit that with maple syrup. Roast at 350 for a- Hey 
guys i know it's been forever but today i am back with a recipe of how i do my sopa de fideo in this case it's conchitas and this is the brand i use we're gonna make sure to fry it and toast it up until it's looking like this or as toasted as you like it next i'm gonna be adding a whole tomato sauce can don't even come at me if you make it from scratch good for you but this is how i make my sopa we're gonna fry it up for about one minute one or two minutes now i'm gonna go ahead and add a water the water you guys add is optional the more caldo you want the more water you add of course now i'm gonna be adding two tablespoons of caldo de pollo now we're gonna mix it and cover it for about 20 minutes and let it do its thing you hungry let's make a snack in a blender, one pear, couple of cloves of garlic, soy sauce, goju jam from Korea, sesame oil, just a little bit, and fresh ginger. Ooh, I almost forgot a little bit of sugar, a little bit of oil, let it go. Thinly sliced ribeye steak, and then in goes all of the marinade. Let it rest for at least 30 minutes, a couple of hours, even better. Get a skillet as hot as you can. You know what these are? Just the noodles. This, give it up. Noodles on the bottom, bulgogi beef on top. Garnish with fresh scallion. All you gotta do is bow your head and say, Grace, Gito. That's Grace in Korean. The secret to a great Philly cheesesteak is the caramelized onions. In a large saute pan, melt half a stick of butter. Add in one large chopped onion. Some people prefer slices, I prefer dice. Cook on high heat for five minutes, constantly moving. Then turn your heat to low. Come back every five minutes and give it a stir. After 30 minutes, it should deepen in color and look something like this. Season with salt and pepper and set aside. Meanwhile, freeze your ribeye for 10 minutes and then cut thin slices. Pat dry with paper towel and then season all over with salt and pepper. In a large pan, heat your oil until smoking and then add in your ribeye. Sear for one minute and then flip over. Turn your heat off. Add in your caramelized onions, give it a stir, then add in your provolone and cover it with a lid. The residual heat will melt the provolone. Meanwhile, melt a quarter stick of butter and chop one clove of garlic. Mix the two together and then brush on your rolls. With the same pan used to cook your onions, toast your rolls on low heat. Next, add your Philly cheese stick on those rolls and you're ready to enjoy. Here's how I make barbecue pork in a pinch when I don't have all the ingredients to make it from scratch. I'm using this Chinese barbecue pork seasoning mix that I found at the local grocery store just down the street. This is about three pounds of pork shoulder. To the mix, I add in some garlic powder, four tablespoons of oyster sauce, and three tablespoons of hoisin sauce. Mix the ingredients together and then cover it up and refrigerate for at least six hours. The longer that you let this marinate, the more flavor the meat has. This was cooked in the air fryer at 375 degrees for 15 minutes on each side. During the week, I try to keep it quick and easy and have this on hand so the kids can have something to eat with rice or with noodles. Hope you guys enjoy this easy recipe. This is a perfect recipe for those busy weeknights when you just want to get dinner on the table but you want it to be done in less than 20 minutes. It's a family favorite and this is called in Arabic hawaushi. It's basically ground beef that's wedged between two pieces of pita thrown in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 to 20 minutes and it comes out brown and crispy and delicious. All you need is a pound of ground beef, salt and pepper, garlic powder and onion powder, a little bit of cayenne, and I've added minced garlic and minced onion, you can put as much as you want, and a serrano pepper. You don't have to add this if you don't like spicy foods. Then you just pat it down in between the pita, throw it in the oven at 400 degrees for 10 minutes, flip it over, and then do the same thing for another 10 minutes. Make sure you spray your sheet pan so nothing sticks. You don't need any added fat because the fat in the ground beef allows it to crisp up perfectly. Okay, I'm making my literally favorite snack ever. I make these all the time. I have this recipe like perfected. So you're gonna need rolled oats, you're gonna need a protein powder. I use chocolate and vanilla, so you can do whatever one you want, or both. Peanut butter, honey, and then you'll just need your add-ins. So I always add in craisins and chocolate chips. So two cups of rolled oats. And then I do two scoops of chocolate protein and then one scoop of vanilla. And then a handful of craisins. 
and a handful or more of duck chips. Mix the dry ingredients. And then one cup peanut butter. I always do the peanut butter first and then the honey because the oils and the peanut butter help the honey come out easier. So do one cup of that. And then one cup of honey. It'll look like that. And then you can either roll these into balls and make like protein balls or you can just put them into a pan and make them into bars. Saw something on TikTok and I had to try it. I'm half Filipino, so I wanted to make these lumpia shrimp, I guess you could call them. So I defrosted, rinsed, and peeled all of my shrimp and left the tail on. Then I went ahead and cut the wrapper in triangles. This will make it easier to wrap the shrimp. Take the top of the triangle, fold down. Take the other corner, fold over, and then you just want to roll all the way until you get to the other corner. Once you get to the other corner, you want to either wet it with water or egg yolk to seal. Kind of like this right here. <laughs> then you just want to repeat the process until you finish all of your shrimp. I like to put mine on a separate plate. It just makes it easier for frying. So it should look like this right here. And then this is them frying. Enjoy. Let's make soup dumplings. Not to flex on anyone, but I took Chinese for a long time. So in Mandarin, these are pronounced xiaolongbao. Start with two tablespoons foie gras. Then add one green onion, a few bits of ginger, and one and a third cups chicken stock. Boil this for eight minutes until the stock is reduced by half. Now add one and a half teaspoons of gelatin. Once it boils, we'll put it in the fridge to cool. For our filling, we'll start with one minced green onion, one tablespoon of rice wine, one and a half teaspoons of sesame oil, a teaspoon of soy sauce, one and a half teaspoons of sugar, about a half a pound of ground pork, a little salt, and a little pepper. Add our gelatin mixture. To build our dumplings, I'll first put a little filling in the middle and then slowly begin and crimping the edges. And we should end up with this beautiful pattern. I'm guessing most of you guys don't have a bamboo steamer. Aluminum foil ball, plate, and then your dumplings. For my sauce, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, a little soy sauce, and some julienne ginger. That's easily one of the best foods in the entire world. Street food on TikTok for 21 days. Piece of steak, pork three shallots, sub four cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of cornstarch, four tablespoons of water. Mix together, heat up to medium high. Add in three tablespoons of butter. So we're gonna add in all our shallots. Take together for two to three minutes. We're gonna add in the garlic for one to two minutes or until fragrant. And two and a half tablespoons of black pepper. Three tablespoons of ketchup. Three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Mix together. Add in two tablespoons of soy sauce. One tablespoon of oyster sauce. Mix together. Then half cup of beef stock. Let it simmer for two minutes. Add in the cornstarch mixture. Consistency we're looking for. Now cook your steak however you prefer. And all the highly recommended, use the leftover grease to fry an egg. You always serve with a side of spaghetti, add on your steak, or on your black pepper sauce. Oh look at 